the biblical truth of our hymns and can it be by Charles Wesley now this hymn according to many John Wesley uh, was immediately written after his conversion uh, for the sake of thinking about God and I lost the reference I had up uh, when John Wesley was converted on May 21st, 1738, there's two possible hymns that have been written by him. They're not sure, but this could have been one of the first ones he written after he was saved. The first stanza is an amazement of the love expressed in God. That his son died for us. And the hymn, it, it, written by John, dying for him. Now take this hymn and apply it to John Wesley himself. And that's what many of these hymns are. They're, they were not made for public singing. They were just a poem written down to give expression to the love of God in their lives. And he looks at the mystery of how can God die for us and the benefits we get thereof. In the second stanza, Wesley calls for the incomprehensibility of God's love through mercy and through the sacrifice. That moment that John Wesley realized and received Christ as a Savior, and if you remember that, that moment when you get clean, you feel clean, you are clean, and that just amazement of the awe of what God has done through the new birth, and the Holy Spirit comes inside you, and you become a child of God at that moment. In the third stanza, it recounts the infinite grace and mercy of Christ's love. And the incarnation, the death, and finding lost sinners. The fourth stanza, it's attention to the bondage of our sins. And the freedom that's found in Christ, and yet, even though saved, we will still sin. And if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The, the saving grace of the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary does not end when we get saved. It continues on in our life. It says, and can it be? What a question mark. What, what the experience that I should gain and when the world looks at the word, the world looks at the word gain, you know, money, profit. But when someone who is saved, they look at the word gain and they see heavenliness. They see sinlessness coming. You see the love of God. You see adoption into a family. You see the peace, love, joy. Beyond comprehension, beyond what money can buy. An interest in the Savior's blood. It's by blood. A word that is removed from modern Bible. If you're not saved by blood, you're not saved. Plain and simple. Died he, Jesus, for me. And Calvary, upon receiving Christ as your Savior, becomes personal. Because it is you and God. Salvation is not what our parents can or grandparents can do for us. It's not what you can do for your children. It is you and God, Jesus Christ, and what he has done for you. Who caused his pain, Isaiah 53. From the time that Jesus is arrested in the garden, stands before the Sanhedrin, stands before Pilate, the Roman soldiers, and the soldiers of the priests, and the, the, the thorny crown upon his head and the nails and the beatings and the fists and the pulling of his hair and the pulling of his beard. The abuse that Jesus took was because my sin. It pleased God to bruise Jesus. Christ Jesus excelled. Of all that pain that ever a man has ever felt on this earth. You say, why do you say on this earth? Because there's a greater pain if you reject Jesus. And that's when you go off into the lake of fire and you just burn with 
multiple worse than third degree burns. The Bible says that Jesus, not a bone was in, was of him, was broken. Yet the Bible says that his back was likened to a flower going out in the fields plowing. Jesus Christ was a bloody pussy mess when he went to Calvary's cross. And we can't even fathom. When he carried that cross, I mean, he's just goo. He's been broken. He's been beating. He, 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 he's agony to carry that cross because of me for me who him to death pursued Christ went to the cross because I am a sinner for God so loved the world that whosoever and I was that whosoever that day April 21st 1987 in the afternoon of Saturday as I knelt down with the Bible being read to me as I was pronounced a sinner going to hell. Calvary became personal between me like it became personal for Charles Wesley. It was for me. Amazing love. The world throws love out there just like it, it, it's just a common word. Like chocolate and candy. But when you look at the love of God, the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. God loved us enough despite what I was, am, until I received Christ. God's long suffering is not willing that any should perish and they reject him and they, 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 they go against Christ. They, re, they uh, rank on Christ. They scold Christ. They, they're angry with Christ. And yet the love is still there until they die. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That love is a charity. It's giving. Love in action. How can it be that thou, my God, and that can only be said after salvation. You don't have Christ as your Savior. He's not your God. You can do whatever you want to do. But without the gospel, without your putting your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, He's not your God. Jesus said in, in a case like that, you're, you are of your father the devil. That's your God, small g. Shouldest die for me, that thou, my God, should die for me. This hymn would not be sung in a Jehovah Witness convention or gathering because unlike Jehovah Witnesses Charles Wesley and I believe that Jesus is God and when we talk about that blood we're looking at Acts 20 28 and it says God's blood purchased the church you've got to have God who suffered and died on that cross you got to have God's blood Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? <clears throat> God died for me. God, Jesus Christ. There was absolutely nothing more than God can do but laying down his life. And men and women today, as I preach on the street, uh, you have the nerve to say that whatever you think is much better. You're going to look at Jesus Christ one day, the great white throne judge, and you're going to tell Jesus that what i done is much better than what you've done. And you may disagree with me today, but in the eternal, you think that what you can do is better than what God done. By not, re not receiving Christ. He left his father's throne above. Talk about a comfort zone. Talking about a place where it's absolutely sinless perfection. They're the cherubim. They're the angels. Holy angels, unholy angels. There is God the Father. There's a peace, there's rejoicing. And Christ was born in a in an animal's crib. 
in the middle of the night of Bethlehem during taxation and no one even really cared but the immediate family. And one man was looking for the Savior, the Messiah, when Jesus Christ was circumcised and named on the eighth day. One woman who was faithful to God in prayers got to hold the baby Jesus. And when the wise men come to Herod and say, oh, these men here say they're looking for the king of the Jews, they followed his star, and they haphazardly went to the Old Testament and found a prophecy and just read it to them. And they, of the priests and the scribes, did not follow those wise men to go find Jesus. Only the wise men went on their own. What I'm trying to say is Christ left the throne and he really did not get much of a crowd or gathering. He didn't come down here with a mega church. He had 12 faithful men and, and a bunch of women that took care of him along life's way for 33 and a half years. And when it came to the cross, there were few women and John, the son of Zebedee, at his cross. Christ did not come for a fanfare. He came down to suffer and die. And when the nation of Israel realized he was not going to conquer the Roman government at that point, crucify him. And we'll take Barabbas. Now, if God were to tell you, say, if you had some kind of luxury, God say in your luxury, I'm going to have you go down to the slums, and they're going to hate you, they're going to use you, they're going to abuse you, you're going to die a horrible death, and they're going to use your name as a cuss. How happily would you be, okay, sign me up. And yet the Bible says, for joy, Christ laid his life down. So free, God, so free. So infinite, His grace. There's a man I'm praying for right now, someone's working with, and he's just too wicked, too vile that God would not save his soul. There is nothing that you have, will, or able to do that God says, nope, got to reject you. There's only two sets of beings that God has totally rejected. And that's Satan and his angels. And if you're a man that's born of a woman, you are able to be saved until you die and enter into the eternal life. There is no little sin of stealing a cookie to, you know, committing every sin. You can commit every sin in the world. And bow the knee at Calvary and say, Christ, I want to receive you as my Savior and the angels will rejoice over one sinner that repented. Forever full of grace. God's never, never going to run out of grace. Like that woman. She ran out of oil once she got the last pail, bucket, or pot. But God's grace just keeps on going. It's a miracle. Emptied himself of all but love. Christ God died. No heartbeat, no breathing. The blood flowed out of his body from that spear. He was lifeless and dead. And laying on that, I don't know what he laid on in that tomb, but whatever that, that what he laid on. And his soul is in hell. His soul is walking across that abyss. That soul has come to Abraham's bosom. He has met the dying thief. He's met the Old Testament saying he's still for the love. The love never stopped the death because in three days and three nights he would be risen from the dead. And he showed up to his apostles and here I am and he upbraided them because they're unbelief and taught them and helped them. And sent them on their way. Why? What did he send them to do? 
to go in all the world and preach the gospel with my loving care. And bled for Adam's helpless race. If you do not have a bloody religion, you do not have salvation. And you don't drink the blood, you are a cannibal. You receive the blood by faith. You believe in the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. You don't have pictures of it, you take it by faith. Tis mercy all, immense and free. It don't cost nothing. If you go to a church, a religious center, whatever you go to, and they want you to buy your entrance into heaven, you got to buy a candle. you got to pay for this program. It's not going to get you to heaven. Because all the price and all the amount was fixed upon Jesus Christ on that cross, and God reached out for the payment of man, free to man, laid upon all of my son. For oh my God, hey OMG, that's a sin. OMG, that's an expression to be used. I'm in trouble, or praise the Lord beyond words. Oh my God, it found out me. There is none that seeketh after God. The Bible said, God came to me. The Holy Spirit drew me in. Not what I've done. And like I said, that point on April 21st, God, the Holy Spirit said, okay, now is his day. He's going to finally listen. Tis mercy all. All mercy. Immense, great, expand, and free. For oh my God, it found out me. Eighteen years I lived as unsaved man. As far as I know, no I've never seen a gospel track. No one's ever come knock on my door. No one's personally showed me with an open Bible. Seventeenth year that uh, uh, my grandma invited me out to church. No gospel track given to me. Just, just come to church. Come to church. I didn't go looking for God. I told my grandma I, I will go to church with her just to make her shut up. I'll go to church and don't you ever ask me again. I'm going to go to church and shut you up. I had no idea I was going to find God. I wasn't looking for God. But God found me. Long my imprisoned spirit lay. 18 years. Many of those years, if there are events in those in my life of 18 years lost, I have looked back and I have seen notes and I have heard the story. There should have been death. All kinds of death. Many of them were snowstorms. Blizzards. I should have been dead. Had I died in those circumstances, I would have been in hell. Well, a couple of them, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't know what sin was, so I wouldn't have been charged. But there have been a few times, had I died, I'd be in hell. I'd be in bondage to hell. And you only would come out when you come out to be judged of the great white throne judgment. And from that time, you'll be thrown off in the lake of fire. And you're not coming out. There's no doors. There's no locks. There's no need for handcuffs or uh, leg irons. You just don't come out. You are forever bound. It'd be like a man's cast into one of them castle dungeons. And they shut the door and they just totally forget about him. Now that guy will die eventually, but... When we talk about the eternal life and the flames of hell and the flames of the lake of fire, there is no death. The Bible says torments. My 
My imprisoned spirit lay fast bound in sin and nature's night. When you die in your sins, you go to hell. I buy a candle. You die in your sins, you go to hell. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You still have iniquity. I never knew you, Jesus was that. When you die as an unforgiven, unwashed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are forever entombed in a prison called hell and the lake of fire. Because you have not put your sins on the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Nature's night. <laughs> oh, I worship God with nature. I got Mother Earth and Mother Nature. You know, I just let the spirits of the, the Aquarius, I let the age, I just go with the flow, and they'll end you off into darkness forever. John chapter 3 says, You're not condemned going to be condemned you're condemned already when you are born of a woman that woman has buried you into this world she has populated heaven or hell and the only way you get to heaven is by the Lord Jesus Christ and the nature of man before God told Noah to, to, to build that ark the nature of man is violence and wickedness and sin and the nature of man after the ark rested and Noah came out with his family and those animals is still the man's heart is wicked. Jeremiah says above all things who can know it. My eye diffused a quickly ray. I awoke the dungeon's flame with light. That's coming out of Acts 16. That's that Philippian jailer. Whoa, what was that? An earthquake? Oh man, all the doors are open. Give me my sword. I'm gonna kill myself. Wait. Wait. We're all here. That's a miracle. And he came forth with a light. <laughs> Paul and Silas had a greater light than the light of that jailer. He said, What must I do to be saved? He's been listening to them, probably put to sleep by him singing about Jesus not contemporary singing singing about the Lord Jesus Christ in the Bible and, and maybe part of the Psalms and he comes forward what must I do to be saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and he did and he saw a greater light and Jesus said I am the light of life that man came out of the dungeon dark and miserable and saved. My chains fell off. Peter. Peter's fast asleep in jail and the Holy Spirit's going to whack him across the face. Hey, will you get it? Peter is so at peace. He's under a death threat. He's going to die the next day. And Peter is such at peace. He's like... <laughs> The chains fall off Peter. The, the, the angel of the Lord is walking him. His heart has been set free. Charles Wesley's heart been set free by Jesus. My heart's been set free by Jesus. The chains fell off. I'm still a sinner, but I'm no more bondage to those sins. And if there are sins at the judgment seat of Christ, they will burn up to ashes. They, me, will not burn. And... Through the walk of, of, of Christ as a saved man, as a child of God, there have been many instances in my life that God has freed me from. And my heart has been made clean. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. John Wesley, no, Charles Wesley, excuse me. Charles Wesley went forth and followed the Lord. There are many who receive Christ as their Savior and they sit down and they don't follow the Lord. That's a shame. 
Saturday afternoon, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Sunday morning, I raised my hand in church service and saw what? I stood up and said, I have received Christ as my Savior. I am washed in the blood. I went that afternoon, I went to my dad's house, went to my dad and said, Dad, you're going to hell. I got up and I walked and I talked and I did what the Bible, and I didn't even know what the Bible told me to do yet. Saturday night, the, the, the pastor came up to me and said, you know, you got to be baptized. I had no idea what baptism was. I come out of a Roman Catholic church. I thought that was taken care of years and years ago. And he sat me down. He, he explained to me what the baptism was. He told me it's not salvation. It's a public testimony. I said, I need to be baptized. He said, yeah, let's be baptized. Wednesday night, I... Uh, Went to church. He said, you know, I forget what night it was, but we go out door knocking. We go out door knocking? What's that? We go out and knock on doors and tell people about Jesus. Let's go. Guy got me to what the real belief of, of gospel tracts are. I give them out to people? Yeah. All right, let's go. And I had a period of time where I backslid and, and I did wicked. And I, I, I just had no heart for God, but I still witnessed. I still walked. <laughs> and the Lord was gracious and full of mercy and full of grace. He said, I'll take you back. You fool. <laughs> Put all that extra baggage on you. My chain fell off. My heart was free. I rose up, went forth, and followed thee. Are you following Christ? Are you obeying? Are you reading and studying the Bible? Are you praying? Are you going out trying to tell people about Jesus? Are you trying to grow people in Christ? No condemnation. Now I dread. I'm not going to burn a place called purgatory. I'm not going to go to hell for a little while for my sins. That's done. It's been paid by Jesus. It has been washed in the blood. And if I do have sins, and I will, at the time that I die or at the time of the rapture of the church, those sins that are not under the blood, that I have not confessed, they will be put as wood, hay, and stubble. They will be churned to ashes with no reward. But don't let anybody after you're saved say, well, if you said, you know, you're going to lose it. No, you won't. It's not yours to lose. Jesus. That's a name not mentioned much in script in the hymns. And all in him. All in him. Be interesting. It's too late now. All right. We've got 58 hymns that we've done so far. And this is number 247 in this hymn now. Should have gone through and counted how many times so far and every time Jesus killed them. That would be an interesting little study. Too late. Maybe you should do that. Maybe grab a hymnal and go through each every song or the poplars or whatever and find out how many times Jesus shows up in the hymns. I lost where I was. Jesus. And all in him is mine. Jesus is seated in heaven, right? That's mine. Jesus is the Father. That's mine. That's my dad. That's my father. Jesus has New Jerusalem and making mansions, correct? That's mine. All to be mine one day. Alive in him. I'm not going to die. If I go before the rapture, the Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. If I were to be in a hospital bed and my family's around me, I don't know. The Bible says that moment when I, that's it, this body is dead. I am with the Lord Jesus Christ as quick as lightning, as quick as a flash, as quick as a twinkle or not. I'm with Jesus. I'm in a better place. When my wife died, I, I envied. 
I know you're not supposed to have it. She's in a better place. Not still here. A lie. You know, when you die, you don't die. Even if you go to hell. The Bible says that rich man died, okay, and he woke up with his eyes in hell. There's a transformation from this life into the eternal life, heaven or hell. And once you die to this world, you live forever in heaven by Jesus or in hell by anything. You could be in blessed or you could be in condemnation. You could be in mercy and grace or you can be in torment. And that will go on forever. John says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. That's what Charles Wesley is writing about. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's hell. That's the lake of fire. And John says that is no way to live, but you live in hell or you live in a lake of fire. That's no way to live. My living head, capital H, Jesus, and clothed in righteousness divine. Fine linen is, is the clothes of righteousness. I forget how that verse goes. Bold I approach the eternal throne. That's in Hebrews. No religion will have you walk right up to God. You can't. I walk right up to the throne. Dad, respectfully, Father, I have a request. And claim the crown. I hope I get a crown. Through Christ. I am not going to get a crown because of what I've done. I'm going to get a crown because of Jesus. Because I love the Lord Jesus. I want to do things for Him. Because He first loved me. My own. Christ is my own. He's no one else but mine. And if he's yours, he's no one else but yours. Your life in Christ is much different from my life in Christ. But he's our own. We can claim it. We can walk up to the throne. I didn't say name it and claim it, but we can claim we can walk up to the Father and say, Father had petitioned, and the Father will say, Yes, no, maybe, not now. I didn't say name and claim it. Bold I approach the eternal throne, that throne forever, and claim the crown through Christ my own. And can it be? What wonderful, glorious, more, if you do right, after Calvary, after the empty tomb, after the stone being rolled away, after he is risen, and your faith and your belief in that, oh, and can it be, I'm going to get a brand new body. And can it be that God's going to walk with me in my life? And can it be I can tell others? And can it be that I got a problem? I, I go to the throne and say, Lord God the Father, help. And can it be uh, troubles, troubles, problems, and all that? And Christ comes up to me and says, no, I understand. And can it be I get the Holy Spirit that dwells in me forever? And can it be I'm going to get New Jerusalem, a mansion? And can it be forever and ever and ever and ever and ever with no time, no more pain? And, and can it be, I will be sinless one day. And we can't even fathom the all and it can be. And there are things in our life that and can it be, we don't even know what God has done to protect us and bless us. And can it be, would be, matched with the hymn, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And when you count and look at your blessings, and you look at those things that God has done, and God is doing, and God will do, and you say, and can it be? 
And can it be that my mom was saved? Is saved? And can it be my grandparents are saved? And can it be possibly that with prayer and seeking God that one day maybe my dad will get saved? And can it be that my children are saved? And can it be that my children are serving the Lord today? And can it be my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? And can it be I may get a crown? And can it be I may get an inheritance? And can it be that I suffer for Christ in public? And can it be that I have the greatest, most wonderful message for all the world to hear the gospel? And can it be that God says, hey, Sit down and talk about these hymns, and other people will hear them. And can it be that I can be a blessing at church rather than receiving a blessing? Listen, go to church to be a blessing, go to church to get a blessing, be in both avenues. And can it be for me, for Charles Wesley? May 21st, 1738, he was saved. For me, April 21st, 1987. And can it be the greatest love ever? The greatest forgiveness ever? The greatest charity ever came through God, the Son, Jesus Christ. Where I became saved, washed in the blood, and a child of God. And can it be?